Okay, I gotta be honest, like 100% honest. I think Crash Bandicoot 1 as a game was a great base, a great start for what was to come with the proper transition to Crash Bandicoot 2, which was a game that I feel is a great definition or the perfect definition, however you want to look at it, as to what a sequel should be like. It is not that hard and it is not that easy. It is just the fine middle ground slash gray area that a platformer should be to its predecessor or just any game in general. It's 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 an innovator in a sense. Now, it makes sense that we're fighting Cortex again in Crash 2 after Crash 1 because it follows up directly after Crash 1. Cortex strikes back after he comes out of the fucking junk that he was in after he fell off of his blimp in Crash 1. It makes sense, right? Crash Bandicoot 3, while I do admire that game's versatility, the soundtrack, the presentation, everything, there is one giant glaring issue that I have with that game, and I don't care what anyone says, I know that Crash Bandicoot 2's final boss with Cortex was weak, but it did prove its point. Cortex did strike back and you did fight him regardless if the fight was objectively weaker than the one in Crash Bandicoot 3 or even one at that. However, Crash 3 introduces a new villain, Dr. Nefarious Tropy, the master of time and the inventor or creator of quantum energy or whatever the fuck, right? So what I'm trying to understand is why did they introduce him like he was going to be the final boss in the game when in actuality it was just Cortex again but with Uka Uka on the side and you had Aku Aku fighting him I guess. To me that's bad writing not in terms of not I guess I would say not only in narrative but more so in game design because you can't just cock tease everyone with a villain that we've never ever been introduced to before or never seen before rather and then just to have him not be the final boss like I get it he invented the the warp room and everything like that to scatter all the crystals around different times or eras but he would have been perfect for a final boss in the game and for him to be defeated we could probably never see him again but he's like treated as the side villain just so he could reappear again which he does in Wrath of Cortex and Twin Sanity and Twin Sanity I think kind of represented him the worst because he had absolutely nothing with the main plot line of that game because that game was mainly centered towards Cortex and his two pet parrots and it showed how selfish of a person Cortex was. Basically Twin Sanity was nothing but a Cortex game and Crash was just kind of there for the adventure. So what I'm basically trying to get at is Dr. Entropy in my opinion is the most underutilized villain in the Crash series and I feel like they could do a lot more with him since he hasn't been really defeated or killed since he wasn't the main villain of Crash 3 which I think he should have been. That would have been more interesting. Uh, but instead, we got Cortex again because I guess the fan outrage at Crash 2's boss not being that good made them want to improve him as a villain in terms of a boss fight in 3. I really don't understand why they didn't make Tropy the last villain in 3, but they didn't. Um, that's really all I can say. I just wanted to get this video out because I didn't have anything else to discuss and I didn't want to keep doing videos on CTR and Grand Prix and all that BS, so I thought it'd be cool to talk about my one glaring issue with Crash Bandicoot 3 and it's not the gameplay it's it's just mainly the villain entropy like I really don't like how they wrote him in and kind of just put him on the curb and now he's just a side villain he's not really nothing special or powerful like he was supposed to be but yeah that was it for this video thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time peace